Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video that is super exciting and it is something that I love, 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 love talking about and that is annotating in my books. I know this is a very controversial topic. A lot of people do not like writing in their books and that's totally okay as long as you don't make other people feel bad for what they love doing. Before I used to be like, oh, I can never write in my books. My books are precious. Nobody can touch them. And then I was slowly coming into terms with the fact that annotating is one of the best things that a person can do while they're writing. I feel like it enhances your reading experience tenfold. It makes it so much more fun. It sort of creates a unique book because no other book in the world or no other copy of the same book is gonna have your writing and it's gonna have all the little thoughts and feelings that you had and I feel like that just makes it so much more special. Today we're going to be talking about annotating in your books, how I do it, why I do it. I have a lot of people that when they see me writing on my books or like underlining certain passages, they're just like, what are you doing? You. You should never do that. In school, they taught me that you can never write in your books. We're not in school anymore, sis. You can do whatever you want with your books, especially if you bought them with your own money. You are entitled to do whatever you want with it. And that's sort of the mindset that I have when I write in my books. Without further ado, let's get into the whys and the hows of annotating in your books. So the first thing that I wanted to get into is how I started annotating and it's quite funny because I actually started annotating because of college. Me too. <laughs> okay, so where was I? <laughs> the first book that I ever annotated was actually for college. There were a lot of words that I didn't know the meaning of, so to make it easier on me, I sort of just underlined words that I didn't know and I wrote in the margins the definitions of those words and that's sort of how everything started. I realized that I really enjoyed writing on my books. This is the first book that I ever annotated. It's called La Otra Penelope, written by Andres Mateo. I sort of underlined words that I didn't know and I wrote down the definitions and also at the end of every chapter, I would put a post-it that sort of summarized what happened in the chapter, if anything important happened, and things like that. And that actually made my comprehension of the book so much more developed than it would have been if I just read it and that's it. Because as I was writing down my thoughts and what I thought, I started to realize certain literary devices and symbolisms and all those things. So I'm actually very thankful that I decided to annotate this book, even though I didn't put any tabs on it because I was still not there yet. <laughs> I color code my annotations and I didn't used to do that. Before I would just underline things that I liked and I would just be like, I love this and I would tab it. I didn't use colors for it. I just kind of used tabs that kind of went with the colors of the cover of the book. So for example, blue lily lily blue. The cover is kind of green and you know, those sort of vibes. So the tabs are kind of yellowish. So they kind of make like a nice contrast. So I did no sort of color coding in my first days. Also, I didn't underline in my books. So I started just putting the tabs on the page that I wanted to remember. But when I actually go to the page that I tabbed, I need to read the whole thing to know what I wanted to remember. That's when I started to underline certain paragraphs or phrases that I wanted to remember. That way I knew why I was tabbing and not just tabbing a whole page. So there are some books that I just put a like five or six tabs and that's totally fine. But then there are some books where I go a little bit crazy. <laughs> Again, I still wasn't color coding when I read Kingdom of Ash, but I went a little bit crazy. Um, 
I definitely started to underline in my books as you can see there. That way I know what I wanted to remember from the tab and I didn't have to read the whole page again just to know why I tabbed it. Later on in my reader life, I decided that it'd be fun if I color coded. So the very first time that I tried color coding was when I read Lord of Shadows written by Cassandra Clare. And as you can see, here is my first color coding tryout. I used pink for things I love, which is sort of obvious because we connect the pink to love, so yeah. Then green for important plot information, purple for random thoughts or funny things or other stuff, and blue was for theories, especially in series. I have a lot of theories because sometimes I can just put like a blue tab and be like, oh my god, I think this is the missing princess. And then when I find out that she is the missing princess, I can just go back to that tab and be like, I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! So it's very fun and very satisfying when your theories turn out to be true. When I read Queen of Air and Darkness, I decided to step it up, you know? Just step it up just a little bit. So I still used pink to highlight things that I loved and I exchanged the green for the yellow for important plot information and the purple for orange in thoughts or random things or funny comments and the blue for green and theories and then the blue I used for sad moments or just things that made me want to cry. And then purple are favorite moments, which differs from things that I love because things that I love can be certain phrases or just little bits of the scene, but if the whole scene is my favorite, like the whole thing that is going on, I just, you know, I tab the whole scene with a purple tap to know that that whole scene is great. Take a shot every time I said scene right there. Now I'm gonna show you the materials that I use to annotate. I have all of them in this little pouch. Let's just... The first thing that I have here is a lot of pens. I really like this brand. It's called Maped or Mapped. Graph Peps Extra Fin 0.4. I've found that these are really good and they don't leave residue in your books because sometimes I've used markers or pens that sort of stain the paper and I really don't enjoy that because it doesn't look pretty and it ruins the book and I'm not here to ruin books, I'm here to annotate. So I think it's very important to find markers that work for you and that work for the book so that you don't ruin it and you can still read it. Then I also have this one which is Stabilo.88. It's fine 0.4 which is also pretty good. I use these for underlining but then to actually write down the comments and my thoughts and whatever, I use this Uniball Signo Micro 207. This is a very fine point and it makes for very high quality writing. So I would definitely recommend it and it doesn't bleed through the pages and that's the most important part, honestly, that it doesn't bleed through. Inside the bag we also have the tabs. These are perfect because they have all of the colors that I need and it doesn't leave any residue which I again repeat is very important if you want to keep your books in good condition because I've used tabs in the past that I pasted or I put it in the page and then when I want to like move it or something when I lift it from the page it rips off parts of the page and parts of the word printed on the page I don't appreciate that <laughs> I got these off of Amazon and they're so good and they're very economic which is also like a huge plus so yes, I just love these so much and they go perfect with my color coding. Hi. Hi. So you love your pants, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I always have like backups because I do run out of tabs pretty fast, especially the pink one. I use the pink one religiously 
and I always run out of pink fur, so that's a bummer. If there are any questions that I haven't answered yet or that you may have, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe you realize that annotating is not as evil as you might have thought, you know? Maybe annotating is something that you could even do in the future. This has been how I annotate my books. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Bye!